Her strike is incredibly fast and devastatingly accurate. The inland taipan is the most venomous snake in the world. Just one bite from what some people ominously refer to as the fierce snake contains enough venom to kill a hundred adults. The good news is that human attacks are rare, given the snake's remote habitat. However, attacks have happened, and to no surprise, the consequences have been severe. A love affair turned nightmare when Nathan Kid Cody was bitten by his new pet, the deadly inland taipan. Handling snakes for a living will certainly increase your chances of being bitten by one, and Nathan was no exception. But that doesn't mean the average person can't fall victim to the inland taipan. This was the case for a 17-year-old who decided to keep the venomous snake as a pet. Not a good idea. He took himself to Curry Curry Hospital along with what is believed to be his pet snake. He needs to take out a lottery ticket. He is extremely lucky to still be alive. With only half an hour to administer anti-venom after you've been bitten, you'll need to act fast. And with a chance of being paralyzed well before that, if you happen to be alone when you're attacked, well, let's just say you'd need a miracle to survive. Why do the inland taipan scales change color depending on the season? Why do they behave so differently from coastal taipans? And what should you do if you're bitten by one in the wild? Before you get paralyzed with fear, make sure to like and subscribe for more incredible survival stories. Found in Central East Australia, the inland taipan averages just under six feet in length, but some have reached over eight feet. But what it lacks in size compared to other snakes, it certainly makes up for with its potent venom. The inland taipan mainly hunts long-haired rats, which live in the dry, remote outback. But they've also been known to go after other rodents and warm-blooded mammals. Most snakes will corner their prey, attack once, and quickly retreat. But the inland taipan is a rare exception. It will attack multiple times in quick succession, injecting more venom with each bite to ensure that its meal is paralyzed quickly. With fangs ranging between 3.5 and, and 6.2 millimeters, you would certainly know if you were bitten by one of these guys. And if the initial bite doesn't catch your attention, you can guarantee the venom will. We'll discuss what to do if you're bitten, but first, you should know when these snakes are most active. To avoid the harsh, dry heat the Australian outback is known for, the inland taipan will usually hunt in the early morning before sunrise. During the day, they tend to retreat to cooler spaces below the surface, often in the tiny burrows home to mice and other prey. So try not to step on any small holes out there. Their scales also help them regulate their temperature by changing color. This happens seasonally. In the winter, the inland taipan appears darker to absorb more heat. In the summer, they adopt a lighter, more pale color to help them cool off. But at one point, no matter their color, they were almost invisible to the scientific community. Here at How to Survive, we're all about survival, even when it comes to surviving the tough demands of being a video creator. Thankfully, you have InVideo AI as your perfect co-pilot and personal sidekick. And now with InVideo AI's version 3, they've introduced the ability to create stunning videos, putting you in the director's seat in the most seamless, intuitive way possible, no matter what skill level you are at. And I'm not just talking about short clips like what Sora, Pika, and Runway do. With just a simple text prompt, you could generate entire videos with scripts and voiceovers. It removes all friction and makes the process so intuitive and fluid that it disappears, letting users focus entirely on their vision and their idea. So I nerded out and asked it to make a Lego mashup of Breaking Bad, and the results blew me away. Today, class, we're going to learn about chemistry. Yo, Mr. White. <laughs> this is amazing. You can also edit anything you like, like adding your own voice. From short films and product videos to educational content, the possibilities with InVideo AI are truly endless. You can try InVideo AI for free, but if you want to use its generative capabilities, I highly recommend that you go for the generative plan, which starts at $96 a month and gives you 15 generative minutes. If you're already an InVideo user, you can simply go to the add-on section and buy generative seconds. Now back to the show.
The first mention of the species was by Irish zoologist Frederick McCoy in 1879, followed in 1882 by the Scottish-Australian naturalist William John Maclay. But for 90 years, there were no more reports or sightings of the inland taipan. Many wondered if it had gone extinct. That was until 1972, when two brave herpetologists, Jeanette Kovacevic and Charles Tanner, rediscovered it. Thankfully, it was a dead one. This long lapse of reports could be due to the inland taipan's shy and elusive nature, and possibly because of the extremely desolate habitat where they live, which doesn't see a lot of human activity. This is also likely why there have been no reported fatalities as a result of inland taipan encounters. But never say never. The same can't be said for their neighbors, the coastal taipan. They've not only killed humans, but are much more aggressive, bold, and of course, highly venomous. In 2016, a 77-year-old Queensland man was viciously attacked out of the blue by a coastal taipan in his living room. After noticing the snake, he tried to fight it off with a shovel. The snake, feeling threatened, fought back and bit the man, causing him to go into cardiac arrest. Although paramedics were able to revive him, he unfortunately died after spending six days in the hospital. He was the second city resident to be killed by a coastal taipan that year. Deaths by venomous snakes in Australia do happen, but are pretty rare thanks to anti-venom treatments. But this wasn't always the case. You Aussies out there can count your lucky stars because of an amateur herpetologist, Kevin Budden. He was the first person to successfully capture a live taipan snake in 1950. Sadly, he was bitten in the process and died the day after. But thanks to his efforts, the taipan was milked for its venom, which led to the creation of the life-saving anti-venom we know and use today. Kevin, we salute you, mate. But please, don't try to follow in his footsteps. Leave deadly snake interactions to the professionals. Okay, so why does such a shy, reclusive snake in the middle of nowhere end up as the most venomous snake in the world? It all boils down to evolution. Early fossil records show that snakes initially constricted their prey like modern day boas do. Living in lush jungle habitats full of trees to hide in, constrictors could easily ambush their prey and squeeze them to death. But in wide open arid places like the outback, prey like rodents and other mammals could spot snakes far away and easily outrun them. And what better way to slow them down than powerful venom? As I like to say, more often than not, nature finds a way. Over thousands of years, the taipan lived in this remote area with scarce food sources and its venom grew more potent. According to the LD50 test, which measures how lethal a snake's venom is, the inland taipan is so toxic that it's estimated that one bite or 110 milligrams of venom could take down 250,000 mice. Whoa, who needs pest control when you've got these guys, am I right? Still, interactions are possible, so I'm here to give you your best chance of survival. The first thing you should know is that when they feel threatened, the inland taipan will raise their body in an S shape as they prepare to strike. Do not provoke it. The most obvious way to avoid being bitten by one is to steer clear of them at all costs. And maybe consider not hiking through this barren wasteland in Australia, but if you're adventurous, I recommend wearing thicker boots, traveling when the sun is up, and of course, watching your step. Don't put your hand in crevices or small cracks looking for things. Scout out a safe spot before sitting down for a short break as well. If your adventure is cut short and you do happen to be bitten, you can expect symptoms like headaches, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and in more severe cases, paralysis and trouble breathing. If you aren't given anti-venom in time, well, death is also a symptom. That's probably the worst one. You'd immediately want to tightly wrap a bandage around the bitten limb, starting at the site of the bite and working your way up if possible. 
This will help immobilize the venom or hopefully slow it down enough from coursing through your veins, potentially increasing your likelihood of survival. You would also want to rest the limb below your heart and of course, call emergency services immediately. With medical treatment, surviving is very likely. Just ask the 19-year-old amateur herpetologist Nathan, who after days in hospital, survived an attack from his pet inland taipan. He blames himself for being attacked, claiming he was feeding his snakes and cleaning their cages on the same day. The smell of rodents on his hands likely caused the snake to attack. Another snake handler, Ricky Harvey, also had a scary encounter with a pet inland taipan that bit his thumb. While selling the snake, he moved it from its cage into a bag. However, he had trouble opening the bag, and that's when the snake attacked. Of course, I question why anyone would want this snake as a pet, but that's besides the point. Thankfully, Harvey was able to remain calm, which may have bought him some time as he made his way to the hospital and was administered the necessary anti-venom. But what would happen if you didn't have access to the anti-venom? Say you're traveling in the outback, alone, get bitten, and within minutes, paralysis kicks in. Things are looking bleak. You die. So let's get into the details of what happens to your body. How does the venom affect your blood and organs, and why does it cause paralysis? You might already be familiar with the black mamba snake, which is also known for its deadly venomous bites. Its venom consists of alpha neurotoxins. The coastal taipan, mentioned earlier, has venom consisting of beta neurotoxins. As you've probably already guessed, both alpha and beta neurotoxins can be deadly. In simple terms, alpha neurotoxins block the muscle receptors that signal your muscles to contract. But beta neurotoxins are worse. They can completely stop your nerves from communicating with your muscles, which could lead to permanent damage and even prevent your lungs from working. This is why many Taipan victims are put on ventilators. This brings us to the inland Taipan, whose rare venom contains both alpha and beta neurotoxins. To no surprise, this makes their venom extremely potent and deadly if not treated quickly. It also contains a chemical that speeds up the absorption of venom into your bloodstream, which is why it's a race against the clock to get the anti-venom in time. Except, that's not all. Their bite can also cause your body to stop clotting blood, which may lead to internal and external bleeding, specifically at the site of the bite. The venom can also directly affect your kidneys and damage muscle tissue thanks to the myotoxins released. Even if you're fortunate enough to get administered anti-venom in time, you may still have substantial issues in the future to deal with. Long-term problems can include nerve damage and paralysis, as well as muscle weakness. So even surviving the initial attack may not be the end of your troubles. But with all the bad that can come from the inland Taipan's venom, there has also been some good, believe it or not. Medical professionals have discovered that a blood clotting protein in Taipan venom can potentially be used to stop bleeding during vascular and major trauma surgery. Another research team has been working on recreating Taipan venom glands to produce artificial venom, which could be used for anti-venom treatments. Far safer than finding inland Taipans in the wild, am I right? <laughs> By tweaking certain chemical components of this lab-made venom, they hope to create more effective types of anti-venom. Unfortunately, there isn't an anti-venom available for every snake type. And most victims don't even know the kind of snake bite they're dealing with, significantly reducing the likelihood of survival. And not all snakes need to bite you to release venom. Have you ever heard of the spitting cobra? It's even more terrifying than it sounds. But don't worry, we also cover how to survive an attack from one. Be sure to check that out, and we'll see you next time, right here on How to Survive.